Today we're comparing the Power BI slicer versus the filter pane. To show you when to use slicers, when to use filters, and when you actually need to use both together. Here on our report page, we have three years of expenses for a freelance business. Let's say we wanted to filter our month by month visual by year so that we can see one year at a time. To filter using the filter pane, we'll click on the visual, then add the year field from our date table to the filters on this visual section. We'll switch the filtering type to basic filtering, and now when we choose a year, our month by month visual only shows expenses for the year we selected. If we want to filter all visuals on the page by the year, we would add the year field to the filters on this page section instead. So let's delete the year filter we created, then add the year field to the filters on this page section and switch to basic filtering. Now when we choose a year, all of our visuals change to show only expenses for that year. And if we wanted to filter all visuals on all of our report pages, we would remove the filter we just added and add the year field to the filters on all pages section. But what if we want to filter only some of the visuals on the page? For example, let's say we want to filter these visuals by expense category, but we don't want the filter to affect our total expenses, average monthly expenses, or month by month visuals. The only way to do that using the filter pane is to add the category field to the filters on this visual section for each visual one at a time, then make our filter selection. And when we want to change the filter selection, we would need to click through every visual again and change the filter selections one by one. So the filter pane is not a great choice if we want to filter only some of the visuals on our report page. Using a slicer though makes it much easier. We'll remove our year filter, then create a slicer and add the category field from our expenses table. Let's change that to a drop down layout. Now, if we make a selection in the slicer, we see that all the visuals on the page change. At this point, the slicer is behaving just like the filters on this page section in the filter pane. But Power BI gives us a tool that allows us to turn slicer filtering on or off for each visual on the page. To do that, click Format in the menu bar, then Edit Interactions. Here we can just click the None icon to turn off filtering for the total expenses average monthly expenses, and month by month visuals. And now, when we choose a different category in our slicer, we see that those visuals don't change. One thing to keep in mind though is that setting a slicer to filter some but not all visuals on a page could be confusing to someone else viewing our report. So we wanna make sure that our report is designed in a way that minimizes any potential for confusion. For example, we might do something like we have in our report here where the total expenses and average monthly expenses and month by month visuals are in a separate header section to make a clear distinction between these visuals and the rest of the visuals on a report page. So we've seen how Edit Interactions gives us complete control over what visuals a slicer affects on a page. But Power BI goes one step further. We can use a tool called Sync Slicers that makes it possible for slicers to filter visuals on other pages of our report. To see how it works, let's turn off Edit Interactions then we'll clear our category slicer and add a year slicer. Let's switch that to list and change it to a button layout. Then if we click view in the menu bar and sync slicers, we see the sync slicers pane. Here, we can choose which pages of our report the year slicer affects by checking the check boxes in the first column. And the check boxes in the second column allow us to show or hide the slicer on that page. We want the slicer to appear on our income and expenses pages so that we can view our data one year at a time. But we don't want the slicer on our summary page because that page is designed to show data for multiple years. So we'll check the boxes to sync the slicers and turn on visibility for our expenses and income pages, but we'll leave sync and visibility turned off for our summary page. Now, when we choose a year in our year slicer and go to our income page, we see our year slicer appears there also and the same year is selected. If we choose a different year, then go back to our expenses page, we see the same year is selected here too. But if we go to our summary page, we see there's no year slicer, and the summary page still displays all three years worth of data. We can see that slices are much more flexible than the filter pane when it comes to picking and choosing which visuals are slicer filters and which other pages of our report the slicer affects. Another big difference between slicers and filters is their filtering options. With slicers, we've already seen the list with checkboxes in our category slicer back in our expenses page. We can select multiple options by holding down control or Power BI allows us to turn off multi-select with control so that we don't need to hold down control to select multiple options. We also have the ability to add a select all option and we can even add a search function to make selecting from a long list of options much quicker. The filter pane works almost exactly the same when we choose basic filtering. Let's clear our category and year slicers first and close the sync slicers pane. Now if we click on our category donut chart and expand the category filter in the filters on this visual section, 
we see the same type of list layout. Here the search and select all options are built right in, and we don't need to hold down control to select multiple options. One additional feature is that we see a count of how many instances of each option there are in our data set. But if we choose advanced filtering, we get a lot more filtering options. For example, let's say we want to filter out any expenses that we're paying out as disbursements, since we're going to get reimbursed by our clients. In our data, whenever we have a disbursement, we tag it with the word client in the description field. We can see those tags here in our table visual. To filter out disbursements, we'll add the description field to the filters on this page section, then choose advanced filtering. From the drop down list, we'll choose does not contain, and the text box below, we'll type client, then click apply filter. And now if we look at our table, we can see that the expenses containing the word client no longer appear. Now, in addition to these advanced filtering options, the filter pane also allows us to use an or condition when filtering. To see how that works, imagine we ran a social media advertising campaign from June through August of 2021. And we wanna compare our income during the campaign with our income for all other months. First, we'll switch to our income page. Then we'll add the date field to filters on this page and choose advanced filtering. In the first dropdown, we'll select is after and enter May 31st, 2021. And in the second dropdown, we'll select is before and enter September 1st, 2021. When we click the apply filter button, now our report shows income from June through August of 2021. And we can see that during the advertising campaign, we had an average monthly income of around $36,000. Now we want to look at our income for all other months. In other words, not including the campaign months. We'll change the is after filter to August 31st and change the is before filter to June 1st and then we'll select the OR option and click Apply Filter. Here we see that our average monthly income for all months not including the campaign months is around $18,000. But what if we wanna use slicers instead? First, let's remove the date filter from our filter pane, then we'll add a date slicer and select June 1st, 2021 and August 31st, 2021. Our visuals now show our income during the campaign. Again, around $36,000, the same number we saw when we used the filter pane. Okay, great. Now we just need to look at our income for months outside of the campaign. We don't have an outside of date range option in our slicer. So we'll choose before and pick June 1st, 2021. Then we'll add another date slicer and choose after and pick August 31st, 2021. Here we see there's a problem. None of our visuals show any data. And this is because the logic of slicers is always and. It's not possible to have a date that falls before June 1st and after August 31st. And that's why the visuals show no data. So whenever we need to use or logic when filtering, the filter pane is really our only choice. Another feature of the filtering pane is that it gives us a filtering option called top N. To see how that works, let's say we want to show only our top five clients in our clients visual. First, we'll get rid of our date slicers. Now we'll click on the client's visual, then in our filters pane, in the filters on this visual section, we'll click to expand client and choose the top end option. Next, we'll enter five in the text box under show items, then add the amount field from our income table to the buy value section and click apply filter. And now our client's visual shows only our top five clients by income. If we wanted to see our bottom five clients instead, we would just choose bottom in the show items dropdown. As we can see, these more advanced options for filtering make the filter pane a better choice whenever we need the flexibility to do more complex filtering. Now, another big difference between slices and filters is how much we can control their layout. Let's look at another example. Let's say we've been trying to get our clients to pay us electronically, and we wanna see how many payments we're still receiving by check. To do that, first, we'll clear the client filter, then we'll add payment method to filters on this page and click check. We wanna export data for just the last six months of 2021, so that we can send that to our VA and have our VA follow up with those clients. So we'll click on our table visual and the filters on this visual section expand our date filter. We'll choose advanced filtering and set our filter to is after June 30th, 2021 and is before January 1st, 2022. Then click apply filter. Now the table shows the last six months of 2021 and our data is ready to export. While we're at it, we see the filter pane is starting to get pretty crowded. It would be great to clean it up a bit by removing some of the filters we don't need. For example, we're already filtering the payment method at the page level, so we don't really need that field here. But if we hover over the filter, there's no option to get rid of it. 
If we hover over the payment method filter on filters on this page, we see an X that allows us to remove it. But we don't have that option here or on any filters in the filters on this visual section. If we right click on the filter, we can see that the remove filter option is grayed out. There's an option to hide filter, but when we click on that, it only shows a line through the icon. Now this hide filter option is something that only takes effect in the Power BI service if we publish a report there. But here in Power BI Desktop, whenever a field is displayed in a visual, we don't have any way to get rid of that filter from the filter pane. Since all five fields here appear in our table, it's not possible to remove them. So there's really nothing we can do to make the filter pane less cluttered visually. The only option we really have with the filter pane is to make the filter pane go away entirely by collapsing it. Or if we click view in the menu bar, then click filters, we can completely hide the filter pane from view. But if we're actively using the filter pane to filter our data, those options aren't very useful. Slicers on the other hand, give us a lot more flexibility when it comes to how and where they're displayed. First of all, slicers never automatically appear on the page. If we want a slicer to appear, we create it and then we put it wherever we want. Second, Power BI gives us the ability to hide any slicer, as we've already seen with the Sync Slicers pane. So whenever having a clean look is a priority, especially when our users are not power users, slicers are the better option. So far, we've been looking at when it's better to use a slicer and when it's better to use the filter pane. But there's an important situation where we need to use both together. Over on our expenses page, let's clear our filter pane. And now, if we click on conference in our category dropdown, we can see in our table that we didn't attend any conferences in 2020, but our year slicer still shows 2020. If we go to our data model viewer, we see that the direction of the relationship goes from our date table to our expenses table. This means filtering won't work in the opposite direction. So our category slicer cannot filter our year slicer. Power BI allows us to change this relationship so that filtering works in both directions by double clicking on the arrow and changing this dropdown to both. But that's a bad habit to get into because in more complex data models, it will result in wrong numbers being displayed in our report. The right way to make our category slicer filter the year slicer is to use the filter pane to filter our year slicer. To do that, let's go back to our expenses report page. First, we'll create a measure that calculates the sum of our expenses. We'll right click on our expenses table, then click new measure, and above the report page, we see a bar appear. This is the formula bar. It allows us to use Power BI's formula language, which is called DAX. DAX stands for Data Analysis Expressions. If you're familiar with Excel, this is similar to writing Excel formulas. In the formula bar, we'll type sum of amount equals, then we'll use the function sum, and we want the sum of our expenses amount, then we'll hit enter. Next, we'll click to select our year slicer, then drag our new sum of amount measure to the filters on this visual section. And in the dropdown, we'll choose is not blank, then click apply filter. On our report page, we see that the category slicer is now filtering the year slicer because the year slicer no longer shows the year 2020. And if we unselect conference in our category slicer, we now see all three years in our year slicer. The formula we entered works well with a simple data model and a relatively small number of rows. But if you're dealing with a much larger data set, watch this video next where I'll show you how to create a more performant measure along with the most important DAX functions you need to know to create professional Power BI reports. I'll see you over there.